So thank you guys for being here. Uh, today, me, Omar, and my uh, colleague Rodel will talk about how we kind of do data at Adyen. So starting with the products, we say why we need data science, and then we go through ETLs, platforms, and productionizing uh, the, the products, basically. Uh, so a bit about Adyen. In two words, it's a payment processor. We do a bit more than that, so this is quite of an underestimation. Uh, we've, you, you've never heard of us, maybe, but uh, we almost probably touch your money at some point. So we have a lot of international customers like uh, Spotify or Uber or Facebook. Uh, we are a tech company, but we also have a banking license. So in the eyes of the regulators, we are a bank, uh, which, help, which adds extra layer of regulations or requirements when we approach data in some ways. And we are omnichannel, which means we help companies uh, or what we call merchants like Spotify uh, accept payments in any way from customers like you. Uh, so like any payments company, we start a presentation with an example payment. The hero of today's payment is Andreo, which is our colleague. Uh, he also has a talk today uh, about monitoring in Adyen. So please attend that. And he also managed to stick 60 Rick and Morty references in one presentation. So if you like Rick and Morty, it's a great uh, talk to, show, to attend. And he came to this, uh, to the Rai, taking an Uber, right? And so it happened, his payment went through Adyen. And we helped take the money, in this case, from the customer uh, effortlessly and put it uh, or move it to Uber. Right now, to the outsider, this looks like uh, you know a black box, or in this case, a green box. It's it's uh, just a series of API calls, but what actually happens inside is a lot and a lot of decision points. Right? Uh, we think, okay, is this uh, payment a real payment? Is it a fraudster trying to steal the money? Maybe yes, maybe no. Should we pass it through authentication? If it failed, should we retry? When to retry? How to retry? How to validate the card? Right? Uh, and there are some more holistic uh, decisions we take, not necessarily on the payment flow for a specific payment, but about the whole uh, platform or like for a group of payments of like, is this plat uh, platform performing as expected? Is any of the connections down? Is everything all right? Uh, so again, a lot of decisions and you only optimize the answer by using data and in this case, we take each bunch of those questions, uh, package them in a web service. We have a service-based architecture. And uh, each one or many of those web services relate to a product. Uh, some of them are purely internal, like monitoring. Some of them are external, where merchants that use our platform optimize or also add their own business rules on top of it. And yeah, so Revenue Protect is basically our product to try to stop fraud. Uh, Revenue Accelerate is about increasing the auth rate of payments. Uh, the internal one, like monitoring, you could say it's uh, for platform and keep an eye on the platform. And it could, could also add an extra layer on it on how clean is the traffic. Uh, and the regulations come in place in this case. Right? So, Basically, all of this lives on a live platform, right? So whenever an API call comes in, whenever you want to buy a burrito or whenever you want to take a taxi or pay for music, this is what receives the API request. This is what authorizes the payment. This is what moves the money, right? And this live platform, there are three main requirements that overarch any decision you take around this platform or any platform or data, for that matter. First of all, it's highly available. So uptime is an extremely serious manner when it comes to payments company. We have to be uh, ideally 100% uh, uptime. Uh, low latency, as in the payment, we need to take those decisions as the payment gets processed, right? Uh, we have to process and get take decisions as quick as possible. We have also a lot of decisions to take. This is a real-time inference of any, let's say, machine learning model you put in production. And we handle a lot of sensitive data. Ethically and by regulations, we need to take very good care of this to make sure you know, it's, uh, we abide by regulations and we don't leak your personal data, right? So the first decision that comes is where does this data live if you want to put a lot of data for processing? Uh, 
And with that comes the data platform, right? Uh, we have a separate data platform, the life platform. There we train machine learning models, we run advanced analytics, uh, we can generate some reports, we can run some offline batch uh, machine learning model if we have some, let's say, internal decisions to make. And this is powered by Apache Spark, and that's where all the data lives. Uh, and now since we have two platforms, we need to, uh, those two platforms have to communicate, right? We need to ETL from the live platform to the data platform. When we train machine learning models there, we need to push it back to production uh, to make actual products. We went over the products a bit. We will not go over what magic happens at the data platform, but we'll stick to talking about the ETL and ML in production. So starting with the ETL, we have two classes of data. One is a financial stream. So with, when the payment gets processed or whatever modifications happen to it, we save uh, those modifications in a database and then we stream out of this into our data platform and we save as tables there in Avro format. We also have the other class of data, which is purely analytical. And we only uh, need this data for machine learning models or advanced analytics. It's not really needed in the live platform itself. So this, what we do is we log it in a structured way as, a JSON, as JSONs, which gets synced via file B to the data platform. And there we have an application that runs and automatically transforms those JSONs into tables in Avro or Parquet formats. And once those source tables or golden data sets hit the data platform. Uh, we run ETLs on top of those and create derived table out of all of this. Now we have the data. We did something to it as in training machine learning models. The next step is putting those models in production. And my colleague Rodel will talk about this. So up until this point, Omar explained a bit of how we actually get data in our data platform, also why we have a separate data platform. But we didn't touch upon the point where we actually want to make use of the data analytics that we actually did in the data platform, or the models that we trained inside of the data platform. Kind of as a first iteration, what we kind of looked at is, can we expose data that we have in our data platform and make use of it to make our data-driven products better, or even to base the decisions of these data products on data that we analyzed or models that we have fitted. Kind of the first iteration that we did is something that we refer to as kind of our BEAM framework. So essentially what we try to achieve as a first step is to be able to transfer data from one point to the other so that in our live platform, whenever we have a transaction coming through, we have the ability to use data from our data platform and make better decisions based on, on that. So here you can think about, um, like, if you fit a model, you can think about parameters. So let's say you fitted a, um, a model in the data platform and you want to expose it. What you would do is you would export those parameters and you would use them in the live platform where you would build most of the logic inside of the live platform. So here you could see that in this example, you would need quite expertise in, in different areas to actually be able to use that model in production. You would need to have someone on the data side fitting the model, but you also need to implement that on the live platform where part of the logic would live there. Um, and that's why we have uh, begun to design a kind of more <laughs> unified framework of actually bringing machine learning into production. Uh, we refer to the framework as Alfred. Maybe you um, know the reference, but we're referring to the butler in, in Batman, essentially trying to serve a data scientist to be able to bring machine learning into production. So zooming a bit more into the Alfred framework, um, what we try to set up is a framework that actually empowers data scientists that are working within Adyen to be able to, in a unified way, whichever library they're using, to build models, to actually track experiments, 
but also to um, retrain models and have a unified way of rolling that out and serving the models in the live platform. Here you kind of see we have kind of a service-based architecture and actually the Alfred component lives as its own web service inside our live platform. So any of our data products can actually use Alfred, so kind of the, the it's as its own web service, and then get kind of um, decisions based on the models that were uh, put in production. So how does this typically look like? So how does the flow typically look like if we look at the Alfred framework itself? So essentially what we have is the first step would be to kind of experiment what is working. Can we actually make a model? Can we experiment on that? And we do that using Spark and we do that in Jupyter Notebooks. And we kind of obtain code which we can use to um, actually fit a model and try to, to expose that. Then as soon as we get to the point where we are satisfied that our code is correct, we can actually push that code to MLflow. And there we use MLflow to actually fit the model. And also as a next step would be to roll that out and, and serve that, uh, that model. Also here, MLflow would be used for retraining purposes, actually. And also there, um, in MLflow, you can also set up your performance metrics and you can have some visualization of how does it actually perform and um, how can it be used. So what we zoom into more now is kind of the rollout of how we do this. So essentially, rolling out machine learning or even getting machine learning into production could be seen as kind of a generic thing that a company would do. But what we try to do is enable everyone to use one framework of having um, machine learning in production in Adyen. And um, the first step would be, as soon as we have kind of our model, we fitted that model, we would try to make it available in our live platform. So here we would kind of register the model. It is actually then available to be exposed. And then gradually we try to roll out this, this model. Also what Omar mentioned is that since we are also in kind of the financial industry, we try to be uh, satisfactory with kind of our model performance and also be sure that the model that we actually roll out and that we use, that we're satisfied with how it's performing. So one of the first steps would be put the model in kind of a, we would refer to as a ghost mode. That would be a state where the model is actually inputted the data which is kind of coming through the whole payment flow, but actually we do not make any decisions based on it. We just see, looks every, does everything look all right? And then based on that, we can progress to a next state where we would route a certain portion of our payment traffic to that model, see how it performs and then gradually roll it out more and then put it actually on live mode, which would more or less say most of the um, payments would actually be routed say through this model. In any state uh, that the model is, is in, we have kind of performance tracking and we would try to see, does the model perform well? If in any case it doesn't, we see it as a failed experiment and we do not make use of the model anymore. If in any case we have a model either like on the test or live mode, then we can always roll back to a previous version if um, we see that it isn't performing as well as we think it should. Here's something to, to mention is also that Alfred as a framework, we're still testing it out fully. So what this means is that there's still a lot that can be done here. We have set up the framework, but we're trying to see, can does it perform as well as we expect it to be? And um, that is the current state of, of, of where it is. This is the session that was uh, referred to by Omar. Uh, so Andreo is giving a talk uh, later today about uh, time series forecasting and anomaly detection based on, on this. This will also go more in depth into kind of more theory and also show more of the code which actually is involved when getting things into production and how is machine learning actually used. 
So please join a session if you're interested in um, getting to know more about ADN. Also, one more thing that we would like to mention is that given that we're setting up these nice frameworks and that we're doing a lot of stuff that is hopefully appealing to most of you, we are hiring and we also have a booth here in the exhibition hall, so please visit us. And um, if you have any questions, also visit us there. You can ask anything that you're interested about. And also you can visit our website and you'll know more. And thank you for... Uh, Thank <laughs> you.